Okay, today we are gonna just focus on what is a fraction. So we have two vocabulary words that we're gonna focus on, numerator and denominator. So you can look those up right here, but we are just about to learn about those. So here is our page that we're gonna glue in. So just cut it out and glue it in on the next blank page, but we're gonna keep the directions down here. Okay, so what is a fraction? Well, a fraction is just a way to represent a value that is less than one, but more than zero. It is a division problem. So earlier we learned about decimals. Well, a fraction represents the same type of number, something that's less than one, but more than zero. The cool thing about fractions is they are a division problem. So this could actually be read three divided by five or it could be read three fifths. Now all fractions are made of three main parts. We have a numerator, and the numerator is just the number that you see on the top of the fraction. We have the division bar that separates the numerator from the denominator, and we have the denominator. The denominator represents the number of parts in one whole. The numerator represents how many of those parts we're counting up or focused on. So in three-fifths, we have to think about something that is broken into five equal parts, and we're doing something with three of them. Maybe we're counting them, shading them, something that we're gonna do with three out of those five parts. Now, remember I said you could say three divided by five, but you can also say three out of five. So you can read it that way too. Three out of five. So there's a lot of different ways that you can represent a fraction. Now the directions at the bottom said represent three-fifths as each of the four representations here. So we're gonna show three-fifths in each of these things. So one way you can represent a fraction is a part of a group. So in this representation, we would have to have five things in the whole group. So I'm just gonna start by drawing five circles. So this group is made out of five circles. So one whole group has five circles. Now the numerator tells us how many of those to shade. So we're gonna shade three out of the five. And now we have represented three fifths as a part of a group. We can also represent a fraction on a number line. So to do that, we'll just start with a line. And this line is going to span zero to one. And that's because all fractions are, are between zero and one, as long as it's a proper fraction, and we'll learn more about that later. So the next thing you're gonna do is break it up into the number of parts that the denominator says. So remember, the denominator represents how many parts are in one whole. So we have to break this into five equal parts. So one, two, three, four, five. So if you look, we have five parts. One, two, three, four, five. The three represents how far we're going to count. So we're gonna count three out of the five. So one, two, three. So three fifths on a number line would look like that. So now let's do a fraction bar. So a fraction bar looks like this and it has been broken into five equal parts. Sometimes it's hard to get them exactly equal, but just do the best you can. So one, two, three, four, five. So now we have five parts in the whole, and we're gonna shade three of those parts. One, two, three. So this fraction bar represents three-fifths. And we can also do a fraction circle. So it's very similar to a fraction bar, only you start with a circle. Once again, you're gonna try to make five equal parts. Just do the best you can. One, two, three, four, five. So I have five equal parts in my circle. Now the numerator tells us how many we're gonna shade, so I need to shade three of the parts. 
one, two, three. So even though each of these models look a little bit different, they all represent three fifths. And that's because they all have five equal parts and three of those parts are shaded. All right, next time we're gonna learn a little bit more about fractions.